The transport bar in Sunbridge is located on the bottom of the window. It lets you control the main aspects of your project as well as how you interact with it. The first thing to notice is the Soundbridge logo in the bottom left corner which toggles the full screen function. Right next to it is the help menu. This help menu will display the name, shortcut and value of all the Soundbridge parameters you hover your mouse over. Above them are menu buttons. The file menu button lets you create a new project or open an existing one. Here you can also save the project currently open or save it under a different name. Import audio and MIDI files. You can freeze the tracks that put strain on your CPU, rendering them to a new audio track, audio file on your hard drive, or have them rendered in place. You can also export MIDI clips from your project as MIDI files on your hard drive, and audio from your project contained within the loop boundaries. This is where you exit Soundbridge when your creative process for the day is done, or open another project from a list of those you recently worked on. Edit menu offers the basic editing functions and more. After the standard undo and redo functions for the last step you did in your project, you have your cut, copy and paste, which will work on tracks, mixer channels, plugins, MIDI mapping lanes, audio, MIDI and automation blocks, MIDI notes and automation points. Paste to a selected track will paste content copied from a different track on the currently selected one. Here you can also rename, delete or duplicate the elements of your project as well as select all of the same kinds of elements. Group Tracks lets you group tracks together, which is routing those tracks audio to a new channel strip so that they can be processed together. Split allows you to split all the elements under the playhead in the project. Merge will join two or more of the selected elements on a track into a single block object which is really good for arrangements and keeping your projects neat and organized. Adjust length rounds the duration of selected MIDI notes to the nearest increment determined by the beat selector to the right of the so-called snap function, to which we will get to soon. Finally, quantize rounds the position of selected MIDI notes and automation points to the nearest increment determined by the beat selector. Auto Quantize rounds up the position of incoming MIDI notes to the 116th note grid automatically. If you want to hear each audio sample while going through them in the file browser, you can check Auto Preview. When checked, Automation Follow will make our automated XY coordinates, knobs, faders and buttons in our built-in effects physically respond to changes made with the automation during playback. To set up the core of Soundbridge, click the Preferences button. In it, you will find the main setup dialog to make Soundbridge run as smooth as butter. You can set up your audio device, tell Soundbridge where the folder with your VSTs is located and rescan them, searching for new ones or rescanning the entire folder from scratch. You can blacklist your VSTs that cause problems, log into your Skytrax I.O. account, you can check the Options tab too for some multi-core processing goodness and our praised autosave function. In the end, you can set up our GUI to your specific taste managing the color scheme and size of elements. The next section in the transport bar has informational character. Here you can see the time code at the playhead, real-time CPU usage to help you determine if you need to freeze a track or two, and your master output level, which is important because if that turns red, you are clipping. The essential executive action for Soundbridge are these three buttons, record, play and stop. They do exactly what their names imply, under which two buttons, delete, used for deleting elements and shift, used for selecting multiple elements. These come in quite handy if using Soundbridge on a touchscreen device. Swing tool button opens a dialog where you can create a swing quantization setting that will be added to your beat selector. Choose between 8th note, 16th note or 32nd note division and dial in your preferred amount of swing. Clicking Add to Snap will add the current setting to the snap and beat selector and Quantize will quantize all of the currently selected events in the project to the setting you just made. BPM selector determines the speed of playback in beats per minute. You can change it 
by dragging it up and down or by typing in desired value. Right under it is the count in selector, but the value here determines its length before the sequence begins to play. Time signature button opens dialog that allows for setting up a time signature for the project. The only item in this next section that is not a checkbox is this drop down list called the beat selector that we mentioned before when talking about the snap function. Snap and beat selector are there to set the measure for the snap function so that all the elements on the timeline get snapped to the musical grid of the song. So the smaller the value in the beat selector, the more precise your snap will be. Loop functionality will loop the contents between the loop markers until interrupted. Metronome will provide you with a click for every beat in the musical time signature you set up. And since music production usually follows a fixed grid line, Snap will help you get those MIDI, automation and audio events snap in line with the grid. Follow will make Soundbridge follow your playhead if it moves out of the view so that you can always see the part of the song that is currently playing. Count in will play metronome clicks for one or two bars before the recording starts. This will help you get into the beat when recording a live performance. This row of buttons will change the functionality of your mouse cursor, changing it from a select tool into a draw tool, which you can use to draw new blocks, MIDI notes, automation points, controller information, or stretch points for audio editing. The same functionality is provided with the beat detection sensitivity, which will make your cursor magnetically attached to transients in your audio events. The same applies for the cut tool, which can also be clicked twice and become transient sensitive. And lastly, you have your mute tool for muting individual box of audio, MIDI or automation rather than the entire track. The question mark button is integrated tutorial to help you with any Soundbridge functionality. Underneath those are the shortcuts that show the file browser, sequencer, edit window, mixer and insert rack. To close these off, undo and redo buttons divide them from the next section of shortcut buttons. Split, freeze, quantize, merge, adjust length and duplicate are all there to make your life easier and menu free as much as possible. One thing we did not get into detail about is the freeze dialog box. In it, you can choose which tracks from your project you want to freeze and where you want to bounce those tracks. Choosing to a new track will bounce the audio of the selected tracks into a new audio track. And you can also choose if you want to bounce them in blocks, mute the original tracks that were frozen or normalize the audio on the newly created tracks. This is useful for making your project good for archiving, as all plugins are rendered too. So when you open that project years after, you are sure to have all the elements still there. Choosing file will let you bounce selected tracks as files in a specific location on your hard drive, which is good for making stems out of projects for remixing purposes. Option called in place will freeze the track and leave the audio playing in its mixer strip. You can reverse this process by entering the freeze dialog, deselecting the channels you want to unfreeze and clicking OK. Last option offered is Skytrax IO, which allows you to upload your tracks as audio to Skytrax IO servers. This will allow you or anyone else you choose to share your project with to view your project from a web browser based sequencer. From Skytrax IO, you or other collaborator on that project can download the project directly into Soundbridge or record more material for the project from within the web browser. This makes collaborating on projects a breeze, as you can have anyone, anywhere, collaborate with you, even if they don't have a DAW on their computer.